Ukraine. Remember he said we we're going to get just one inch of rain over the next 10 days. And this was in his report that he uh, he did last week. He said the rest of that uh, inch of rain uh, promised a week ago is arriving today. So, yeah, go figure. <laughs> it's 734 Tuesday, March 1st. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for this special report uh, covering all things CNMI, our regional correspondent with the KUAM News team, Tomas Maglotnia. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. Yes, uh, we have the latest with regards to the Senate impeachment trial uh, and the explosion yesterday where tempers more than flared between two senators uh, in the Senate special Senate session yesterday. You can call it a sign of the times as the Republican-led Senate attempts to hold a trial for their party's governor, Governor Ralph Torres, who was impeached by a renewed Democratic bloc in the House. If you're just catching up with us, we wanted to bring you our story from last night about what erupted in the Senate yesterday. Here's uh, that report recapping what happened on Saipan. Chaos erupting at the legislature. Senators wanting to scrap. <laughs> Sergeant at arms seeming to hold Senator Victor Hokuk back after an explosive exchange with Senator Paul Manglonia who walked out out of frustration about the process leading to the adoption of impeachment trial rules. Maglonia walking out after a speaker was cut off for exceeding the three-minute time limit. It started from here. I, I don't like this, Mr. President, uh, that we're trying to leave when the speakers have started out saying they were given no opportunity. I, I, never, I never recognized you. Why are you, why are you, why, why are you intervening? I never recognized you on the floor. We're under public comment. To the people of the Congress, Democratic lawmakers calling a foul when it comes to the airtight rules hidden from public view at last Friday's joint committee meeting. They say the lack of public comments and the failure of the Senate to publish the rules listed on the agenda in real time violates the Open Government Act. Senator Maglonia attempted to deliver public comments of his own after walking out, but the Senate adjourned without action. Special session stands adjourned, subject to the call. Thank you. It's uncertain when the Senate will meet again and if the rules will change. Public pressure from both sides is mounting. Is this the legacy we want to leave for our children, our future leaders? That if we don't like the rules because it doesn't benefit us, we can change them on a whim. It's a sign of the that times okay to as the Republican-led Senate cheat, attempts to, to hold a trial for their because party's we have the governor, majority. who was what impeached by a renewed doing? Democratic bloc in the House. Your job is to the best for KUAM News. Not and so that near fistfight erupting between Rhoda Senators Victor Hulkug and Senator Paul Manglotnia, uh, that translation there for those who are wondering what they were arguing about in Chamorro was that uh, after Senator Paul attempted to give his uh, public comments as a private citizen after he was uh, uh, interjected by the Senate President Jude Hofschneider, uh, he said he was speaking on behalf of the people and that uh, because in the original Joint Senate Committee meeting there was no public comments, and the original rules that were adopted in the meeting that they were going to review in that special Senate session uh, was in fact not published until late, uh, well after uh, the rules were adopted in the Joint Senate Committee meeting. And so Senator Paul Manglotnia there in the vernacular threatening to bring uh, some of the Senate members to court if they don't allow uh, this public access, the public comment for him to deliver his own public comments. And uh, that's when uh, Senator Victor Hulkook slammed his hands uh, on the table, uh, rose uh, to his feet and uh, seemed to uh, dart at Senator Paul Manglonia and both of them being held back, not just by the sergeant at arms, uh, one of whom had to jump over the barricade, uh, but also Senator Edith Young Guerrero seemed to hold back Senator Victor Hulkook and uh, uh, Senate, Senate President Jude Hofschneider seeming to also try a, an attempt to calm down Senator Paul Manglonia. Of course, uh, all of that ending in a, a, an abrupt adjournment of the Senate in the cinema yesterday. But we also wanted to bring you this story from last Friday, where we covered the exact concerns over the Open Government Act, which is basically the public records law in the CNMA, and the concerns uh, that surrounded uh, what seemed to be a secretive passage of these uh, rules for Senate impeachment trial. Here's that story. The, the Joint Senate Committee convened for the first time to discuss Governor Ralph Torres' impeachment Friday morning. Five uh, members voted yes on the adoption of Senate impeachment rules. Um, this Senate impeachment rules is hereby adopted. 
But senators say those rules won't be made public until the entire Senate passes it. Instead, senators opted to read amendments in the 28-page document out of context. However, Senator Carl King neighbors weighed in on why they opted to adopt these rules and not the rules crafted in 2013 by then-Senator Ralph Torres himself for the impeachment trial of Governor Fittell that never happened. There has been public pressure and there has to be, there, there's this narrative around that we in the Senate are trying to prolong this process. And that is, that couldn't be further from the truth. Senators took into account the definition of what they consider to be acceptable House impeachment records. It comes weeks after Representative Selena Babauta in the House transmitted over 5,700 pages of documents as evidence. Our joint committees have gone through great lengths to specify and, and really put a fine point on how we want these documents provided to the Senate. He says the rules they adopt today should withstand time for future impeachment proceedings. The Senate will hold a session on March 3rd. Tomas Maglotnia for KOM News on Saipan. So again, that's the context as to uh, one of the major concerns yesterday that led up to this conflict and this uh, really uh, near fistfight in the CNMI Senate where uh, Senator Victor Hulkuk and Senator Paul Maglotnia were uh, violently uh, yelling at each other. Uh, we did want to bring you a statement from CNMI House Speaker Edmund Villagomez, uh, who, who released this uh, recently. He said, uh, quote, I have read the impeachment rules and I am troubled by the lengths to which the Senate President and the Joint Impeachment Committee have gone to hamper the House of Representatives' ability to conduct a fair trial. The people of our Commonwealth have the right to have us conduct a fair trial. He continues to say the Senate rules present violations without a present violations of the Open Government Act. The impeachment rules were adopted Friday morning without allowing oral comments on the proposed rules, rules that were withheld from the public and not made available to all members of the Senate until close of business. Uh, Villa Gomez concludes it's in the best interest to have a fair trial and it's inexplicable that the Senate would hamper our ability to perform our constitutional duties in this manner. And again, uh, Governor Torres, uh, uh, has denied all of the allegations with regards to these uh, six articles of impeachment that were passed by a vote of 15 yes, four no, and one abstention uh, in January. The first article of impeachment was commission of felony for theft of utility services. The second article of impeachment was commission of felony for theft. The third article of impeachment was corruption for unlawful first class and business class travel. The fourth article of impeachment was corruption for misuse of government resources. The fifth article of impeachment was neglect of duty for negligence during crisis. And the sixth article of impeachment was neglect of duty for contempt of the legislature. Again, uh, these articles of impeachment in January passed by a vote of 15 yes, 4 no, 1 abstention. Uh, we did also want to bring you uh, this uh, story uh, explaining the backgrounds of what two sets of rules were also debated on, not just uh, yesterday at the heated Senate session, uh, but several weeks ago once we, uh, once uh, legislators in the House uh, knew that uh, the impeachment was uh, likely to happen, uh, and that happened by a vote of 15 senators in the affirmative out of the 20 uh, rather 15 uh, representatives in the House uh, out of the 20 representatives that make uh, the House uh, in, in total. And so uh, what's at issue here is that uh, Governor Ralph Torres uh, himself, then a senator in 2013, drafted a set of rules that were about 18 pages for the trial of Governor Benigno Fittiel. Uh, ultimately, if you remember, Governor Fittiel resigned before uh, he was able to uh, undergo an impeachment trial, so the rules were never uh, in effect fully. Uh, but uh, here's a little bit of background uh, on the rules that uh, at least two Democratic senators, Senator Edith Dilan Guerrero and Senator Paul Manglonia himself, uh, both of them aligned with the Democrats, uh, say they wanted to see pass uh, from 2013 good on on the senate that they're already uh, looking at least at the uh, at the rules that were were you know drafted back during uh the 18th legislature to prepare at the time and then you know as we know then governor fito resigned um so at least they're not really starting from scratch and, uh, speaker villa gomez voted in favor of impeachment and they're waiting for the senate to adopt its rules later this week for the trial that would decide if Governor Ralph Torres remains in office. 
it would also set the parameters for the Speaker to appoint impeachment managers, who would be sitting representatives tasked with arguing their case. In a twist of fate, the Senate rules they may adopt were crafted by Governor Torres himself when he was a senator in 2013, preparing for the trial of Governor Benigno Fittel. But those rules were never set in motion because Fittel resigned after the House impeached him. Now Torres may have to face the remnants of the playbook he helped put together. Meanwhile, the Senate is already preparing... In this report by former KSPN2 News reporter Tina Sablon, who was an influential figure in Torres' recent impeachment and is currently running for governor under the Democratic Party, she speaks with then-Senator Ralph Torres in January 2013. And we're just looking at various jurisdictions and we're talking uh, with some of uh, other um, retired judges, uh, justices, and to see how, what is the best way to approach uh, that process here in the Senate because we haven't had that experience here. That experience, now perhaps all too familiar, as focus sharpens on the Senate's process. Senate President Jude Hofschneider held the same position in January 2013. He was interviewed in the same report by Tina Sablon regarding Fittel's impeachment. I'm very much aware that uh, they're, uh, they have a public mandate, and I respect that, uh, that they are priorities for them to move swif swiftly with that resolution. And, and again, um, you know, um, we need to take it head on. Uh, however it is, and, and uh, when, when that, that uh, issue comes around, we're going we're gonna to cross that bridge when it gets here. And now as history rhymes with itself, water is far from being under the bridge. Tomas Manglotnia for KOM News. For KOM News. And there you have it, that report from 2013 with many of the major players still in the game. Just to refresh your memory as we continue our coverage in the CNMI, uh, Governor Ralph Torres, of course, is running with Senator uh, Vinny Sablon uh, as his lieutenant governor in the November election. Uh, Senator Vinny Sablon there was uh, at the Senate session yesterday that uh, heated up, uh, was the one who offered uh, the, the motion to adjourn the Senate session. Uh, he's been asked if... Uh, Many media have asked if he's planning to recuse himself. Uh, he hasn't delivered a response himself, but uh, it seems that he's uh, still going to participate in those Senate impeachment processes. Uh, also, Tina Sablan, the reporter that you saw there, the former reporter, now uh, House legislator who's been an uh, influential figure in the Democratic bloc, uh, wanted, uh, uh, heading into uh, the impeachment vote. She's uh, She was one of the only lawmakers during the House impeachment vote that uh, gave a statement after each article was read and voted on in the House. And then, of course, we can't ignore uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor Arno Palacios currently running for governor uh, as an independent, uh, breaking ranks with his original running mate, Governor Ralph Torres, uh, having testified himself in the House investigation uh, in a panel saying that he's uh, warned the governor of his spending and that he uh, uh, chose not to, to chose not to participate in some of that spending. Uh, and also, uh, Senate President Jude Hofschneider, once again, uh, still the Senate president now, uh, having to deal with these issues. Uh, obviously, if you compare uh, both events, uh, tempers definitely flaring much more this time around. And uh, we're going to head to break real quick. And after the break, we'll get to hear from some of the House representatives who showed up to give public comments of their own at the Senate session yesterday. It's Feed Me Fridays on the mm, New Spicy Lovers Pizza from Pizza Hut hurts so good with its spicy marinara ah! and sliced red chilies. It's like a roundhouse kick to the taste buds. How's it looking? Don't be bashful with the fiery flakes now. I want it to be real spicy. I haven't started yet. Okay, I'm ready. The New Spicy Lovers Pizza. Get it while it's hot. You want respect? Red chilies get you respect. No one out pieces the hut. Watch Mariana's artists, activists, and visionaries and their quest to protect, preserve, and promote our Chamorro culture on The Culture Club, a weekly feature on KYM News Digital Platform and the KYM News Weekend Edition. Brought to you by Hana, the freshest bottled water made in Guam. 
Tatiana's Irrigation and Landscape Superstore. Stop on by and visit our showroom today. We offer everyday low prices on all major outdoor power equipment like bush cutter, chainsaw, power washer, generators, and more. Need service, repair, maintenance? Well, check out Guam's best superstore only at Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape, located in Barragata along Army Drive between Submarina and Best of Market. Call 735-7446 for more information. Now shipping to surrounding islands. Mariana's Irrigation and Landscape Superstore. Good morning, 749, right here on the link, brought to you by Cabo Enterprises, ITD, and Jack in the Box. Uh, we now rejoin Tomas Manglotny, our regional correspondent, with a special report from the CNMI. Tomas, good morning. Good morning, Chris, and, and continuing of our coverage of the Senate impeachment process. Uh, it was surprising yesterday, as most of the public comments delivered at the Senate session before the uh, violent eruption between two senators. Uh, that most of the public comments uh, th were from three lawmakers in the House themselves, uh, one of which is uh, the chair of the committee that led the months-long investigation into Governor Ralph Torres' expenditures and spending and travel. Uh, Representative Selena Babata, the chairwoman of the Judiciary and Governmental Operations Committee, uh, said in part in the beginning of her opening statement, uh, Quote, I want to state for the record that I denounce the proposed rules adopted and passed by the Senate Joint Committee of Executive Appointments and Governmental Investigations and the Committee on Judiciary, Government Law, and Federal Relations, respectively chaired by Senator Francisco Q. Cruz and Senator Carl King Neighbors in their Joint Committee meeting held last Friday in this chamber, and further state that these proposed rules are not congruent with the applicable status statutes and a complete betrayal of the CNMI Constitution, she says. She adds, the OGA, that's the Open Government Act, mandates that the public be afforded the right to make oral comments during the public comment period. Written comments are not sufficient. So here's a bit of her clip uh, as she too was cut off for exceeding uh, the time. Uh, here's her remarks uh, to members of the Senate about these uh, latest impeachment rules. These rules are so lopsided and unreasonable that they violate the fundamental tenets of due process. These rules are intended to preclude the House of Representatives from having adequate opportunity to plead its case on the merits. Antis jo fatu magi ihadi po presenta si na kausa para ipanhilo na luma. Esta in hinuk la pesnya. Esta en titik patenya, esta en gedig kadanya, esta en tep patenya. Only a cheater, afraid of the rules of the game, stacks the decks with five aces. Ms. Babata, it is I, clear that this Senate body will prosecute you, the governor. I ask that you wrap up your and refrain from any reference to any demeaning words. That's all I ask. It is clear that the Senate body will prosecute Governor Torres on a set of rules that are unlawful, unconstitutional, and more importantly, slanted in his favor. The fix is in. These rules basically create a theory of how Governor Torres is not guilty and then work backwards from there, creating such arbitrary nuances, nuisances that if the House clerk doesn't paginate the document, or request for and get the permission of the Senate president in order to submit paper evidence can possibly terminate the entire proceeding. I am disappointed, but I am not deterred. Si dos masi, then buenos dias. And there you have it, the chair of the JGO committee that led much of the investigation leading to the House impeachment of Governor Torres in January, uh, s highlighting some of the issues that the lower house has with the Senate impeachment rules, uh, one including the burden of proof. They say that the burden of proof in Governor Ralph Torres's 
uh, impeachment trial rules uh, is higher than that of even President Donald J. Trump's impeachment rules. Another issue that they uh, have is, uh, again, as as you mentioned, as she mentioned in her in her address, uh, some of the details in terms of the exact way uh, uh, that uh, the documents and evidence should be uh, delivered to the Senate. And lastly, uh, one of the major issues that the House has is the uh, rules outlining the appointment of the impeachment prosecutor, uh, which reads as follows. The House Speaker who authorized the impeachment inquiry shall serve as the impeachment prosecutor. That's House Speaker Edmund Villagomez. Secondly, if the House Speaker is not able to do that, then uh, the impeachment prosecutor will be uh, the House Impeachment Committee chairperson, who's now Representative B.J. Atow, who uh, over a year ago was the one who started uh, the inquiry uh, into many of these documents that have led to uh, the impeachment. So uh, if the House Speaker, Emin Villa Gomez, is, uh, declines to do it, then it would fall into the hands of Representative B.J. Atow, who is the House Impeachment Committee chair. Uh, and then lastly, if both of them decline, then the Senate president will get to hand select uh, one representative, uh, any representative he sees fit, uh, to serve as the House prosecutor. I uh, wanted to uh, wrap up the uh, section with regards to public comments at yesterday's Senate session with uh, this one public comment uh, from the only CNMI resident uh, not in office who uh, delivered his take on the remarks uh, before uh, that heated exchange uh, blew up in the Senate. So here's uh, CNMI resident Vincent uh, Simon. citizen and to represent those that are in fear to speak their mind in public so here we are we're about to change the rules on the 11th hour what if anything is wrong with the previous rule that was implemented during the impeachment of former governor Pitio? are we changing the rules now so that the ruling party of the senate will have the upper hand where is the justice in that mentality is this the legacy we want to leave for our children our future leaders, our future leaders, that if we don't like the rules because it doesn't benefit us, we can change them on a whim. That it's okay to lie, to cheat, to steal. Because we have the majority. What the heck are we doing? Your job is to protect the best interests of the public, not the parties. You are playing political tricks at the expense of the people whom you promised to serve while you were campaigning. All right, that was the public comments from uh, the only non-politician uh, who uh, gave public comments at yesterday's heated Senate session. Shortly after the Senate session, Senate President Jude Hofschneider took to Facebook to apologize to the people of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. Here's his apology. Stitch, but stitch in this case, I am compelled to... Uh to bring this matter before before you guys uh, and i want to uh, express my apologies for what transpired uh, during the during break uh, what transpired earlier and that is uh, not something that we we uh, condone and we should hold ourselves to a higher level of decorum as members of this uh, the senate I am aware that there is a uh, some uh, um, social media videos uh, circulating around, but that does not uh, represent uh, how we function here in this chamber. Um, and to my colleagues, uh, we are better than that. We all know the rules. Most of us have served for several years and we know what our function is and we know what to do when being asked to do so. So I ask that let's uphold that and exert all kinds of professionalism and diplomacy so that we can get through with our order of business. Again, I sincerely apologize for the demeanor of the session and I will be informing you all on the next uh, session to address uh, the matter before the Senate. This was massive. 
And there you have it, Senate President Jude Hofschneider's rare video appearance over Facebook shortly after Senator Victor Hulkug and Senator Paul Maglotnia got into a near fistfight over the Senate impeachment trial rules and process, tempers more than flaring over uh, the way in which that the Senate is approaching uh, the matters before them. Uh, late yesterday night, late last night, the Senate president released his formal statement with regards to the developments responding to both concerns of the House and the public. He writes in part, quote, how the Senate conducts its hearings is governed by impeachment rules. The Senate has the sole authority to draft its impeachment rules under the NMI Constitution. He adds, the House of Representatives had almost a year to conduct its impeachment proceedings and adopt the articles of impeachment. The Senate had only one month to review and adopt its Senate impeachment rules. He says, I am confident in the Joint Committee's effort and work in drafting the impeachment rules. The Senate impeachment rules are reasonable, clear, concise, and consistent with the NMI Constitution. Senator Hofschneider adds and concludes here in this letter, the House Speaker and members should be respectful of the separation of the houses of the legislature and refrain from public and social media attacks against the Senate or its members as we proceed with our constitutional mandate in this impeachment case. The Senate has never encroached in the House of Representatives constitutional authority to draft its own rules or interfered with any of the House sessions, committee meetings, public hearings. The Senate has never presumed to tell the House of Representatives how to conduct its constitutional obligations or business. Chris, that's what uh, Senate President Jude Hofschneider said yesterday, how those obligations are gonna be fulfilled has yet to be seen. We know that there's a Senate session scheduled for Thursday at 10 a.m. Uh, it's unclear if uh, the Senate rules are going to exactly be uh, passed or adopted in that case. Uh, but this is some of the latest developments with regards to the impeachment trial of CNMI Governor Ralph Torres. Let me ask you, Tomas, do you think that this is uh, all leading to, because I know we had talked about what you anticipated the Senate would do um, with this trial, but do you think this is all uh, building up to a big nothing burger? As uh, I know that all the... Uh, people seated at the table on this issue seem to think that the Senate is just going to uh, put this thing to bed, you know, pretty quickly. That is popular opinion, and what many of those, in, uh, you know, in the field are saying is that uh, the Senate is Republican-led. It's unlikely that they're going to impeach their party's governor. Uh, also, uh, what has been said as well is that uh, possibly uh, the opposition's not going down with a the fight. They're going to be going down fighting, and yeah. apparently that involves. Real fighting. Some physical yeah. fighting as well. <laughs> By Cornell, boy! Right. Uh, you know, what do you, pref what do you prefer, though? Because I, I feel like our senators here, there's this, like, underlying passive-aggressive, like, meanness, almost like a mean girls kind of thing going on. Uh, that's interesting to watch, but sometimes I feel like they should just get it over with and start doing what they do in the NMI, which, I mean, it escalated quickly. I almost prefer that. It's less uh, well, disingenuous. feels odd for me to say that violence is not the answer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, it, it's something that uh, many of those watching and uh, some of the statements that were released yesterday indicate that the moment was almost ripe for it. People were yeah. frustrated yeah. with the... Uh, way in which uh, the rules were hidden from public view. I was there in person. I yeah. asked the clerk, I asked the council, uh, can they please have the rules that were listed and voted on on the agenda? They were told me they have to wait uh, for the full Senate to pass. And uh, I've also personally, uh, having reported uh, the legislature since I was in high school, I have not experienced uh, not being able to get my hands on a document that was voted and discussed. Yeah. And uh, what they did discuss was amendments out of context. They read a few words and phrases uh, that they made amendments to. So uh, to me, uh, you know, it's an emotional time. People made passionate remarks. Uh, but procedurally, if you want to get, you know, yeah, let's new get ones that way, it's uh, uh, they, they did not uh, release uh, the rules on yeah. Friday that they voted on. Right. But then procedurally as well, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but... Uh... So how it goes in, in that type of setting is uh, members of the Senate have to be recognized before they can speak, right? That's correct. So the which Senate, is president, why, which the Senate yes. president would be Senator Maglotnia, you know? Senator Jude Hofschneider is the Senate president, right. so and he Senator would, Paul Maglotnia is the person who spoke who, out of line, right. so and as a result would, went to give exactly. his public comments which, as I mean, a private it's kind citizen. Of funny. It's kind of funny. Right. So, he, so ultimately, <laughs> the video that's not on tape that yeah. we don't, oh, we're not video. able to show, oh. or, or the uh, the exchange that's not on tape is uh, Senator Hofschneider told Senator Maglotnia 
uh, you know, it's your choice if you want to leave your seat, but I'm not going back to public comments. So Senator Manglonia went back to his seat, yeah. uh, you know, and then said uh, he's speaking on behalf of the people and that uh, that the Senate president is putting a tape over the mouth of the public. And yeah. uh, ultimately, that's when Senator Victor Hogg slammed his hands and uh, got up to do God do, knows what. Do, do his yeah. thing, if you will. Right, and uh, Senator Manglonia also shouting back, and uh, both of them uh, being uh, addressed by the Sergeant Arms and uh, the Senators themselves. Uh, Senator Edith Young Guerrero in that tape, you can see, uh, initially moved away uh, to cover her ears from the loud uh, banging of the desk and the shouting, wow. Wow. Uh, and then she eventually started running to the uh, altercation uh, and hold was screaming, back, stop. Is that on she the tape? Was was it, did anyone say, hold me back, Par? Or in side pen, I'd be like, hold me back, but I did not hear that. You but, didn't uh, hear that. But uh, it's uh, many people seeing uh, their eyes are set on what the next session uh, will be and yeah. what uh, the rules are going to look like. Based on last night's uh, press release from the Senate president, it looks like they're standing their ground and the rules are going to be what they are and they're going to pass the rules. It it's is just, what it is. It is, it is what, what it, it is. is. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, great report there, Tomas. That Thanks, is Chris. juicy. I mean, that says anything like this ever happened in the CNMI's political history that you have kept track of? Has, have, has there ever, ever been something similar where you had a couple elected leaders or director or whatever, you know, almost coming to blows? I'm sure. I mean, I've, we've seen walkouts before, yeah. uh, you know, whether that's during the State of the Island address and, and things of that nature. Uh, sometimes uh, you just reach a breaking point and after months and months of uh this impeachment yeah, process yeah. years really this is the last stop the this Senate, is right this is, the this last is where stop. do or die right in many ways uh this decides the value of what happened <laughs> in the past few months Chamarita Rage's comment they finally made use of the sergeant at arms <laughs> <laughs> all right well he earned his money his paycheck they're right? they're hard workers they're great people yeah, yeah, yeah and uh they did their jobs so yeah. kudos to them yeah. for keeping their cool and ultimately they prevented anything else from happening so yeah. what would have happened if they weren't there who do you think would have won what are the odds are there odds going oh, Chris, on i'm just here to report oh, that's, you're just here to report the news yeah. just the facts sir <laughs> all right yeah. Tomas. thank you yes uh, stay so, tuned we'll have more tonight on primetime i want to put this in context for like because on guam we have there's a, a few incidents there's one uh with uh former lieutenant governor who's a senator then ray tenorio grabbing the gavel from former speaker G judy wampat i'm just trying to put this like right. we have had these like moments these like WTF. you're saying it's not unprecedented <laughs> <laughs> at least not on guam yeah uh then we also had the chili dog uh fight between uh the late uh, speaker don parkinson and the late senator sonny rossini and the mayors, we also had, uh, there was something with the mayors where Mayor uh, Ben Gumatato, the late mayor, Ben Gumatato, had uh, actually thrown a pretty good hook at uh, Mangila Mayor Nito Blas. Chris, a uh, comment was forwarded to me last night, and it said, when we said fight for the people, we didn't mean physically fight. Yeah. So. <laughs> hey, but you know what? I like the, the display of uh, passion. And uh, many people wondering what to happen next. Great. So we yeah. had the showmanship, and now what will happen next? With Hopefully the statesmanship. Case. Right. All right. Thank you, Tomas. Thanks, Chris. Right on. Good stuff. How juicy is that, guys? Um, I was thinking of other events similar to this. We did have the Republicans. They walked out here, I think, last year. Um, yeah, but other than, uh, see, in our centers, they haven't really come to blows. But what they do a lot is there was, remember, uh, the last term, there were senators who were getting muted uh, because the whole, it was just crazy. So, yeah, I don't know how you guys like it. Do you like this, like,